welcome to Unit 3 of Practical Measurement. This module is focused on utility. Utility at its core is focused on whether the data that we collect will actually be usable given the logistical, operational, and systematic limitations that we face in the different contexts we work in. So when we think about utility, there are three main areas that I like to focus on. One is time. How many actual days or hours does it take us to do all the things that we need to do in measuring children's learning and development? The second is resources. What capacity, logistics, operations, what pieces actually need to be in place for us to actually collect data appropriately and use it? And last is commitment. We often call this buy-in. What senior leadership, partners, and policymakers, and maybe even community leaders and parents need to be involved, and how much buy-in do we need to have from them in order to make sure that the data that we collect can actually be used appropriately? As I was thinking about these three things, I started thinking about my own experience collecting and using data and working with practitioners and researchers around the world. And I thought about four different scenarios based on the different amounts of time, resources, and commitment that you might have. The first scenario is where we have a moderate amount of time, very, very limited resources, but a high level of commitment from stakeholders and other partners to use the data. This I've seen often happens with screening tools, tools where we decide on putting children into different levels of programs based on the results they get on an assessment, or deciding, for example, whether children from an early childhood development program are ready for school based on an assessment. Oftentimes in these situations, what I have seen is that we have a moderate amount of time to, to collect this data, and we have a very high level of commitment from policymakers because they want to see where children are. And so we have a high level of commitment to use the data. But we often don't have the right resources, the right people involved. Oftentimes the right person might be a statistician who can do the sensitive data analysis to understand children's learning and development. And so what ends up happening often is that we collect poor quality or bad data that gets used inappropriately to make decisions about children's lives. The next situation is where we have quite a lot of time a moderate amount of resources, but very low commitment from stakeholders or policymakers or senior leadership. Oftentimes I've seen this happen when we collect monitoring data. Because monitoring data is linked to indicators that we have to report on to donors, it's often written into our grants and into our proposals. We normally allocate sufficient time for it, we have the right people in place to do it, and we have the right budget for it. But because our senior leadership and often partners are stretched thin across multiple programs, the monitoring data just becomes something else that needs to happen and doesn't actually get used to make programmatic decisions. And so what ends up happening is we get satisfactory data that sits on a shelf and does not get used. The third situation is when you have very, very limited time, but a high level of resources and commitment. I've seen this happen often with situation analyses or needs assessment. Because these are done at the start of the program and they're often asked for by big donors, they're written into our budgets and so we have a good amount of resource for it. And because it's happening at the start of the program, most stakeholders and partners are well committed and focused on this kind of assessment. But we oftentimes don't have enough time to collect the data. We have just a few days or months, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, at the start of the project to collect this large amount of data and make decisions about how we're going to move forward. And so what ends up happening is a general sense of frustration. The last situation is where we have very, very limited time, very limited resources, and very limited commitment. I've experienced this most often when working in crisis or fragile contexts. In these situations, we often have very limited time to collect data. We might be restricted when we can go and collect data from children. We often have very limited resources because it's spread across multiple programs and multiple sectors, and because our senior leadership and partners are often spread across multiple programs responding to very immediate needs for children, there might be very little commitment or buy-in to be able to use this data appropriately. So in my experience, we often end up with this question, should we even be collecting this data? Now, don't get me wrong, I am a strong proponent for collecting good, high-quality data about children's learning and development in crisis-affected and conflict settings. But if we don't have the right time, resources, and commitment in place, the data is not going to be usable. 
And so we need to ensure that we have appropriate time, resources, and commitment in place. So as I started thinking about time, resources, and commitment, I wanted to give you some very realistic picture of how much time, how many resources, and what commitment it takes. So I looked back at the last few years of my work and started to average out how much time it takes to pilot test a tool. This is the process of reviewing a tool and field testing it before you actually go out and collect actual data. So on average, for me, it's taken about five days to review a tool with a team, get buy-in, and make sure that the tool was appropriate. It took about 10 days to go through the process of translating the tool, another five days to test it with a small group of children to make sure the items are appropriate and they understand them, three days to train assessors because most of the learning and development tools are quite complex, two more days to pre-test or field test it, and then another three days to analyze the data and finalize the tool. So on average, it takes about a month and a half of dedicated time and resources just to pilot and field test a tool. When it comes to actual data collection, the amount of time it takes for tracking or screening varies because oftentimes we do this for the entire population who's part of the program, and so really the amount of time depends on how many kids are involved. When it comes to situation analysis, monitoring, and evaluation, I try to average it out. It takes between about seven to 20 days for data collection, three to seven days for cleaning the data and analyzing it, about three to five days to go through the process of writing a report, getting feedback, changing the report, getting feedback, writing more recommendations. And then between two to three days to actually meet with partners and other stakeholders and disseminate the results and make decisions about how the data will be used. Now the whole time factor can vary quite widely based on several different considerations. One is sample size. How many kids are involved? The other is homogeneity. If you have a population or a sample that's very diverse, you might have multiple groups that you need to include. For example, if you have multiple languages that are spoken, you might have to translate your tool into multiple languages, which increases the amount of time that it takes to do all of this. The other thing is the literacy level of the participants. In most of the work that I've done, we can't assume that children or adolescents can read the assessment we give them. So we can't do a broad assessment. What we have to do is a one-on-one -on -one assessment where we sit down with the child, or a group assessment where the assessment is read out and children mark the answers. So this takes more time. The other thing to consider is whether you can collect data in a centralized location like a school or learning center, or whether you actually have to go and visit children in their homes to collect the data. Next is whether we collect data using a tablet or a smartphone using an electronic data collection method, or we take twice as long and collect data on paper and go through the process of data entry and data checking and errors. And lastly, seasons, political events, cultural celebrations, they all affect how much time it takes to collect data. Now, in terms of resources, the main thing that comes to mind is what's in your budget? There are five main things I, I think all of us would consider. One is, who needs to be involved? Who are the personnel? The second is, what is the travel piece that's going to be involved, whether that be international or domestic travel? Accommodations and meals for the different people involved, as well as the assessors and sometimes even participants? And then also consultants and contractors. If you need to translate the tool, you might have to hire a professional translator. And lastly, you need to think about materials. Are you going to be buying tablets? Are you going to be photocopying the assessment 400 times? There are some budget templates that we've included in the resources, and there are several you can find online. So use those to actually go through and think about all of these different factors you need to consider. I went back through several years of different budgets of projects I've worked on, which shall not be named, and I pulled together two different budgets for two different programs that came out to about the same amount, about $38,000 for one round of data collection, plus the personnel and fringe time. One project was in East and Southern Africa with about 820 children. We trained 20 assessors. It took about 50 minutes per child to collect the data, but we were collecting data in an ultra rural area where it took us about an hour to get from the field site to the data collection location. The other data was collected in the Caribbean with about 3,600 participants, 35 assessors were trained. It took about 30 minutes per child, but the data was collected in rural but primarily peri-urban schools. And so the data collection could happen much quicker. And so while the final budget amount is about the same for both projects, the particulars of the budget change quite markedly. And the last thing to think about is what does it take to have the right amount of commitment? And to be very honest, the thing that I would suggest doing is going back 
to the video on appropriateness and walking through these four questions. What do you want to measure? Why are you measuring it? How will you measure it? And who will use the results with your partners? and use the discussion around these four questions to bring in partners and other stakeholders to make sure that they're committed to using the data that comes out of this process. So some key takeaways for you to leave this module with. The first is it's very important right at the outset to ensure that you have the right allocation of time, resources, and commitment before you actually start collecting data. The other thing to ensure is that Time and resources will vary quite vastly based on the parameters of what is being measured, when, and how. You need to make sure that you have the right things in place to make decisions of how much time and how much resource you will actually need to collect data appropriately and make sure that it's actually usable in the end.